Before a plane takes off on an aircraft carrier, a sailor kneels right next to the plane. When you step foot on the flight deck of a Navy aircraft carrier, you will observe that the crew members are dressed in various outfits and make various hand signals and gestures. One of these gestures is kneeling next to an aircraft about to take off. Not only are aircraft carriers spectacular in terms of their size, but they also function like well-oiled machinery. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is one of the most hazardous workplaces in the world. Sailors are exposed to continually high noise level and as many as 60 planes and 200 people are crammed into a little more than four acres of reinforced steel armor plate. On the flight deck, workers move in many directions, which may look chaotic to an observer unfamiliar with the procedure. However, the flight deck of a United States Navy carrier is one of the most well-organized man-made vehicles on Earth. It functions similar to an orchestra, with each section responsible for executing a specific movement within the larger symphony of carrier operations. Because all of the noise generated by the aircraft carrier, the only way for sailors to communicate with one another and carry out their respective duties is by using various gestures and signs. These sailors utilize a variety of gestures and signals to communicate with one another. One of the many gestures and signs that sailors on aircraft carriers use to execute their operations is kneeling. It's common to observe sailors kneeling near an aircraft getting ready to take off from the ground. If the person kneeling near an aircraft is wearing a yellow shirt, then the person is the shooter, who is giving the cat crew the signal to shoot the cat. If the person is wearing a green shirt, it indicates that he is a member of the cat crew and is waiting on the cat for the next aircraft to come up so they can be fired. If his clothing is a different color, he is likely a quality assurance team member for the squadron and he's waiting for the next aircraft to taxi forward to the cat for the next shot. Before an aircraft can be launched from the catapult, he needs to perform a speedy inspection to check for any hydraulic or fuel leaks as well as any other obvious issues. During a typical launch, a group of 10 persons will be situated in the box on the deck between the cats. These individuals are the cat crew the Ordnance Department members, and the QA final checkers. Hand signaling is another typical gesture that sailors use besides kneeling. In reality, the hand signals for all of the launches and recoveries are nearly identical. If a pilot comes up with a new maneuver on the fly, there is a chance that it could be misinterpreted as something else, which could lead to a disastrous conclusion. After startup, when the pilot indicates that he is ready to take off, he will give the plane captain the thumbs up signal. After then, the plane's captain and the pilot will wait until someone wearing a yellow shirt arrives to take command of the aircraft. An aircraft will remain stationary on the flight deck unless a yellow shirt controls it. These directors will always be there to regulate the movements of the aircraft, regardless of whether the aircraft is taxiing or being towed. All signals to be communicated to the pilots will be done so above the waist while those to be communicated to the other members of the flight deck will be done so below the waist. The yellow shirt will confirm the thumbs up to go flying and then pass the signal to break down the aircraft. The arms are being moved in sweeping motions, which indicates that the chocks and chains will be removed from the airplane and they will only be kept in position by the brakes. Following the disassembly of the aircraft, taxi signals are utilized to guide the aircraft around the flight deck. In the world of aviation, these gestures are standard. Waving arms to indicate taxiing and bending one arm to signify turning. All the rotations will be made when the engine is idle to prevent the aircraft from sweeping large amounts of thrust and throwing people overboard. When they are taxiing an airplane, yellow shirts are not permitted to move. When the aircraft approaches the yellow shirt guiding it, the aircraft will be passed to the next director waiting for it with a point in the direction of the next director. The aircraft is taxied to one of the four catapults and the route, direction and sequence of airplanes are all pre-arranged and controlled by the handler in flight deck control. They even have contingency locations for aircraft that go down and can't make the launch. Once at the catapult, the aircraft will be given the signal to spread the wings, a sweeping motion of the arms from the chest and fully outward extended position. The director will then extend one arm forward to indicate that it's time to drop the launch bar, which looks like he's flipping off the pilot. The plane will now taxi gently and precisely so that the launch bar and the catapult shuttle are lined up properly. 
An aircraft that has been equipped with munitions will need to be armed right before it is allowed to settle into position on the CAT. During this potentially life-threatening process, an ORDI, also known as a red shirt, will provide the hands-up signal to guarantee that both pilots' arms are in view at all times. The cocked gun hand position, which can be seen in a lot of cruise footage, is something that many pilots prefer to do, but it's not necessary. The ORDI will then communicate the arm-up signal by extending both arms forward and placing one fist within the palm of his hand. After it has been armed, the aircraft can taxi onto the catapult and begin taking tension. A significant amount of power is required to overcome the resistance imposed by the holdback fitting located on the rear of the nose gear during taxiing. The take tension signal comes up next. The person wearing the yellow clothing will first look in both directions before simultaneously doing two hand signals. One hand will be lifted with the palm facing outward to signify off the brakes, while the other hand will be stretched out in front of the body to indicate taking stress. After getting into position, the jet squats down until it is at the muzzle of a loaded pistol. After that, the final director will transfer control to the shooter, who will frenetically wave his hands in the air in anticipation of the run-up signal. The pilot will then wipe out the controls, set the military power, and perform a last check of the instruments. The launch bar won't rise until after the launch. When the pilot is content, he will salute the shooter and then place his hand on either towel rack on the canopy bow or the stick, depending on his preferred method of operation. The choice is entirely up to him. The shooter will then return the salute, point to each of the elements that were on his final checklist, tap the deck, and point forward as a signal that the launch is about to occur. After touching down, the signals become significantly less complicated. When the pilot approaches the landing spot, he will see a yellow shirt standing to his right, tugging one of his thumbs backward to indicate that he should reduce the throttle after the trap. After a brief pause, the hookup signal is communicated by bringing one thumb into the open palm of the other hand. After that, the pilot will give the flight deck chief either a thumbs up or a thumbs down to indicate whether the jet is up for maintenance or down for maintenance. After that, the aircraft will perform a series of taxiing maneuvers until the person in the yellow shirt passes the same signal as before to install the chocks and chains. After that, the aircraft will be turned over to the plane captain. And that will be all for today's video. Thanks for staying tuned. Let us know what you think of this topic in the comments. Please don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you can always get to watch more amazing videos like this. I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.